come on, let's go. We have fires waiting. Those cattle must be to start on time. What's going on? It's not Saturday. What do you wash your feet for? It ain't my idea. Mr. Hoss sprained ankle. Oh, yeah? How'd you do that? He slipped on pencil. On what? Pencil. I stepped on that. It rolled under my foot. <laughs> Yeah, don't worry about it. It's only writer's cramp. Yeah, I'm going to that dang meeting. No meeting. You keep foot in hot water. Oh, there ain't nothing wrong with it. This, this dang pop jockey just wants to claim well, nothing wrong. It's ah! Ow! You keep foot in hot water. Bandage, plenty rest, pretty quick, ankle, all right. It is a little swollen, eh? Go, you go to meeting. Okay. You stay here, keep foot in hot water. Take care of yourself. I'll tell all the guys in town about your heart and Yeah, give them my regard. Tell me, they good. Sorry, wait. Come die the time. Sit down something. Sandy. He must have been in that hotel scene if he could rescue any strays and got trapped himself. Three fires in two months. Too many to be accidental. I agree with you, Mr. Tucker. There's a barn burner loose, all right. I know the signs. When I was sheriff of Van Buren County, I caught three of them. I heard about that wall. It's better than our law officers can do. Um, any word on Sandy? No, not yet. Doc said he'd come over as soon as he could. What about Mrs. Lund? Oh, she turned up all right. Angry, but safe. Three fires in two months. Somebody's setting them. Mr. Tucker, as dry as this town is, any chimney spark could start a fire, and you know that. A hundred thousand dollars worth of damage, and you're talking about chimney sparks? Well, it's a fact, isn't it? No, it isn't. Sheriff! I was poking around near where the fire started. Found this. Coal oil. I knew it. It was arson. There's more bad news. I met the doc on the way over here. Sandy Anderson's dead. Oh. Now it's arson and murder. Well, Sheriff? I'll investigate. Investigate? You want this man caught, tried, and jailed? Every woman in town is scared to death. My wife's afraid to go to bed. Fear the house will burn. Three fires, no arrests. Maybe you'd better step down and let a man who can handle the job take over. Mr. Wallace, right. 
Another fire in Virginia City. We'll get ourselves a new sheriff and a new deputy. Excuse me. It wasn't your fault. You don't know what it's like being responsible for a man's death. But you're not responsible. I told a lot of people that and Roberta was in the hotel. Sandy Anderson might have been one of those persons. Listen to me, Janie. We know Sandy Anderson was in the hotel and on the second floor before the fire ever started. You see, you had nothing to do with Mr. Anderson's death. Thank you. It's been a long night. You two must be very tired. Yes, mm. everybody in town is tired, Mrs. Mark. You two are homeless, though. I think you'd better come out with us to the Ponderosa. No, household. thank you, Mr. Cartwright. Wade Tucker has been kind enough to lend me his home. Oh, well. Yeah. We lost our clothes, but we have a place to stay. Very nice place. Well, it's closer to the stores than the Ponderosa. Yeah. My uh, niece and your deputy make a handsome couple, Sheriff. I've noticed. She wasn't very happy about coming to Virginia City, but all that's changed now. Janie, we'd better be going now. We have to be up early. We have a lot of shopping to do. Mrs. Lund, was that why you went back into the hotel to try to save your clothes? No, it wasn't, Sheriff. It was to save my jewel box. It was in the bureau drawer. Good night, gentlemen. Uh, Mrs. Lund. Since you're carrying that, it might be wise if I walked you ladies home. It's a good idea. The ladies don't mind. We'd be delighted. Oh, Sheriff, Wade Tucker is very angry with you. He wants me fired. He has powerful friends. He's a stubborn man. But I'll do what I can to change his mind. I'll appreciate that. Night. Right. Wade Tucker isn't wasting any time, is he? Oh, you got a lot of friends, Roy. Yeah, but right now they're mostly scared and afraid the houses are going to burn down. Well, Roberta's on your side. She's got a lot of powerful friends, too. Yeah? She's got more money she can count. How about a cup of coffee? Ah, yeah, that's go real good. Did you hear what she said about that jewel case? Yeah. Two, three hundred thousand dollars worth of jewels in a little bitty box. And she leaves it in the bureau drawer in the hotel. Here. She comes back from Europe, she's going to build a new house, spend a fortune on it. One more fire, and more than likely she'll change her mind. That'll make every merchant in town yell for my neck. You get a little spooked, Roy? You betcha I am. I've been wearing this badge for a lot of years now, and I can handle robberies and rustling and a lot of other things, but when it comes to a firebug, I'm, I'm just in trouble, Ben. I could use your help. You know you've got it, Roy. Thanks, man. I gotta investigate, and I have no idea where to start. Hmm. Yeah, that's kind of hard. The ashes from the hotel probably tell us something. We'd have to wait till daybreak. What about those two fires last month? Anything strange about them? Well, there was nothing that I noticed. One of them was a warehouse. Yeah, a Silver City warehouse. The building was locked. Cold ashes in the stove. The place just plain exploded. By the time the fire department got there, it was almost gone. Barn burner, it had to be. Yeah, and Sheriff Coffee did absolutely nothing. I'd look for a man with a grudge. That's what pushes burners, grudges and hate. And if you didn't find them, then what? Deputized citizens will patrol the town from dark until daylight. When a man turns burner, he doesn't quit until he's caught. Well, then he could be out there right now, getting ready to burn the rest of this town. Very easy. There's nobody there to stop him.
Jane? What's this all about? You were too busy, so we did your work for you. He's the firebug. Firebug? All right, Ira, let's hear it. We found him in the alley by the burned-out hotel. There's no law about being there. So that's coming and he ran. That's proof right there. An honest man wouldn't have any reason to run. I see if you're charging at him, a man would be a fool not to. Now, what were you doing in the alley? Going home. He was going to start another fire. That's the way it is with burners. It's one fire after another. You know a lot about burners, don't you? I should. I've caught them. Roy, it took us a few questions, but we found out. He's the night cook at the Silver Dollar. The name's Smith. Whiskey Smith. The best cook in Nevada. He went to work three hours before the hotel fire started. He worked straight through. Bartender, waitresses, the dishwasher, they'll all testify to that. Uh, told you. You three gentlemen owe Mr. Smith an apology. And if it happens again, I'll sue the pants off you. And I'm still going home. And if it happens again, I'll jail all three of you. Oh, that goes up in the beer. Good. Yeah. Yeah. I thought I was just so anxious to find a fire bug up in anybody. All that talk of barn burner brought something to mind, Ben. We had a barn burner here about eight, nine years ago on the Rock Ridge Ranch. Yeah, I remember that. The house almost went up. George Benson fired a, a hand by the name of Tim Moss. Now, Moss was mad at a hatter, and he swore he'd get even. That same night, Benson's barn went up in flames. We never did find Moss, but I hear he's back now. Yeah, he's back. I saw him just a few days ago. Where? He was hunting up around Old Squaw Creek. Old Squaw Creek? Well, his folks had a homestead up there. Uh -huh. Joe, I'd like to talk to him if... You'd ride out and show Clem where the place is, I'd appreciate it. Do it first thing in the morning. Fire! Fire! Here we go again. Second one tonight. Yeah. Cold oil again. Lovely. When's the wedding, dear? We haven't set the date. I know how difficult it is to make plans on a time like this. Most people in this town are afraid to go to bed for fear they'll be burned to death. May I see that? Yes? Mm-hmm. Thank you. It's a shame and a disgrace. And something has got to be done about it. There's a petition going around now to get rid of Sheriff Coffey and his deputy. Fire the deputy? Yes. Clem, you must have seen him on the street. Yes. We met in church. We both sing in the choir. He's the man I'm going to marry. Oh, I didn't mean anything against Clem. I was just telling you what I'd heard. How long does it take you to make a wedding dress like this? A week. 
I'll let you know. Thank you. Looks like somebody's working. Boss's cabin is right up ahead. All right. Let's leave the horses here. We'll walk in. shopping want to see what's going on you know Clem here don't you I've seen him around when'd you get burned out oh about five weeks ago first night I got back bottom rusted out of my stove middle of the night whole place went up yeah, it's a tough break it can happen yeah cabin stands empty everything rusts well the fire took just about everything I owned I mean a new axe a couple of other things <laughs> Prices they charge in Virginia City took just about every dime I had. Just as well, though, if I'd had the price of a room, I'd have been in that hotel. Oh, you saw the fire then, huh? Yeah, I was getting ready to leave when it broke out. It made the one I had look like nothing. I'm going to have to ask you to saddle your horse, Moss. Sheriff Coffey wants to talk to you. I knew this wasn't no friendly visit. Bringing the law here. I thought you were a friend of mine. I am, Moss. Just do what the man says, huh? Well, that's 32 names in a little less than an hour. First thing I'm gonna do is get rid of that deputy. Well, it won't be long till you can. Mr. Tucker's got this recall running like a Swiss watch. There's 16 of us out with these petitions. Then here's a file on all the fires we've had in the last 10 years. Here's one I remember. West Livery Stable. It was started by a drunk who was trying to light a lantern. He dropped a match into the straw. He was here when the hotel fire started. Joseph Ponderosa, Benny, asked me to tell you. When'd you get back, Tim? Five weeks ago. That's what he told Joe and me. I was on my own place, minding my own business, when this deputy drags me in here. What for? Because we've been looking for you for a long time. I got a warrant for your arrest, signed by the district attorney. Arrest? Why? Well, suspicion of arson, a barn burn, and the rock arrest ranch. Barn burning? The day you left town. You were fired about noon. You swore you'd get even. The barn went up that night. Not me. I was past Carson then, heading south. Oh, I didn't even know about it till now. In any case, I've got to hold you. The warrant is still in force, so let me have your valuables. I'll keep them safe for you. Little Joe, where you been? How come you come back so late? Thanks for sitting me, I cooked it out late for you. You think I cooked 24 hours a day just Look, for I said, you? Fix me something to eat. Fix me a sandwich or something. You look beep. Doc came out to look at my ankle. He told me about the fire. Well, you make that plural. Fires at more than one. Is that a fact? You have any idea who's behind all this? Well, they got Tim Moss in jail. I don't think he had anything to do with it. Well, why'd Roy arrest him? Pressure. And to arrest somebody, the whole town's on his back. Moss was the most likely candidate because he was mixed up in that barn burning over at Benson's place a few years ago. There was a reason for that. He and Benson had an argument. Benson fired him. No reason for him to burn the hotel in Virginia City or burn anything else. That makes sense. 
you know, arresting him and putting him in jail, that ain't the end of it. They still gotta let him stand trial. That's the part that worries me. I will say that Ma sure looked surprised. Yes, he did. And he admits that he was here for the warehouse fire as well as the hotel fire. He was near another fire too, Roy. Where was that? You know that cabin out at the Moss Homestead? It burned after he got back. Certainly piles up, don't it? But I'm still not 100% sure. I've got some stuff to clean up out back. Okay, if I get it now? Go right ahead. Right. There's one fire on this list that we haven't talked about. The Ross Hardcastle house. <laughs> that was seven years ago. Oh, Ross lost his life in that one. He was half owner in the Lucky Lund mine. He and Lucky weren't getting along very well. In fact, they were yelling at each other when Lucky Lund killed over the heart attack. Next thing you know, Ross's house burned. Yeah, there were some ugly rumors at the time, I remember. Well, well, it's bound to be with this three, four million dollars involved. Which Roberta Lund inherited. Yeah. And then she went to Europe. And she came back and the fire started. You tell Mrs. Lund that the chef coffee and Ben Cartwright right are here to see her, please. What do you two want? We've got to talk to Mrs. Lund. She's here. And she will be until her house is built. I told you we'd have a new sheriff. And we will have. 1,200 signatures in one day. It's your privilege. Honor. <laughs> oh, no. My pleasure. He's still angry. But I did tell you he was. How nice to see you. You're just the people I wanted to see today. Won't you sit down? I, uh... I've been thinking about the man who died in the fire. Mr. Anderson. He's a miner, I understand. Out of work quite a bit of the time. That's right, ma'am. He died a hero. His wife and children need help. That's what I wanted to see you about. What did you have in mind, Mrs. Lund? I'd like to give a big, big party to raise money. That way, everyone in Virginia City can contribute. And I'm sure they'll all want to. Oh, I'm sure they would. It's, I'm just wondering if this would be the right time for it. Next week? Well, yeah, I think right now, uh, most everybody is pretty worried about their own homes going up in flames. And I don't think they'd want to go anywhere. I'm just wondering how many people would show up at that party. I hadn't thought of that. See, as soon as this whole thing is cleared up, my... I think everybody would be very happy to pitch in and help you make this the biggest party that ever was. How very nice of you. Thank you so much. Uh, Mrs. Lund, uh, uh, Mr. Cartwright, what? I realize that I haven't asked you why you came to see me today. I think I can guess. I profited by a fire in Virginia City some years ago. I hear there are some people who think I set that fire. I imagine even my name is on your list of suspects. Well, there is just one routine question that I have to ask you. And it's, where were you on the night the hotel fire started? I was giving a dinner party at the Nevada Club. Now, you may be right, Andy, but I still think it's his right foreleg. I'll be right with you, Jane. Come on up in here, I hear you caught the firebug. Well, I think so. Sheriff Coffey's not so sure. Is he mean looking? Oh, I guess you can say he's mean looking, yeah. What's going to happen to him? Prison for life. If he's found guilty, man died in fire. I feel sorry for him. You don't mind if I feel sorry for him, do you? No, I don't mind. Oh, you're a very pretty girl. I'm a very lucky guy. I hope you still think so after I tell you what I did. Oh? Aunt Roberta wants to have an engagement party for us. Oh. And I told her to go ahead. All that fuss. Isn't there some way we can get out of it? Women like that kind of fuss, Clem. Besides, it's only a small party day after tomorrow. 
Women like it, do they? All right. I surrender. And I went shopping for a wedding dress. Oh, I don't mind you shopping, but we may have to wait. Because of the petitions? Why, sure. I may be out of a job. Clem, I've been thinking about that. Why wait? I mean, you can quit your job now, and we can get married right after the party and go away. We can go to California or someplace. I mean, you can find another job, and I'll find go a job. Go away? I, I thought you liked it here in Virginia City. Not really. The only thing I've ever liked about Virginia City is you. Please, Clem. I want to get married as much as you do, Janie. Or more. But we can't. Not until this firebug thing is over. It's going to be all right. You just hang on. Wait right here for me. I've got to see the sheriff a minute. Ready to send you to the Iron Hotel. You wouldn't eat either. That's your choice. Sheriff, I didn't set any of them fires. Sheriff, that's the truth. I swear it. Sheriff, you gotta listen to me. You gotta listen, Sheriff. Somebody's gotta listen. Sheriff, you gotta listen to me. <laughs> Not been going on very long? He's been like that for three weeks now. He insists he's innocent. Well, most guilty men do. The point is that there's been no fire since Moss was locked up. Well, Roy, you feel a little more certain about him then? Then I wasn't until I heard that George Benson, that's the man who fired Moss, was at the hotel at the time the fire started. Motive, Moss still trying to get even. So that wrapped it up for me. Well, Roy, uh, I think there's something you want to hear. Dr. Quinn and I were talking in the Nevada Club, and he told me something that... Look, stop, sir. Well, now, some of this is supposition, but there is medical evidence to support a lot of it. There are people who are mentally ill who set fires without motive. They're not looking for money or revenge. They just like to see things burn. Are you trying to say that Moss is not guilty? No, 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 no. I'm saying that... The mental illness does exist. And Moss may have it. Well, that's possible. Those who do are moody, depressed, withdrawn, just before they set a fire. And happy when they watch the fire and fulfilled afterward. I've seen a lot of these cases. I paid my way through medical school by working in an insane asylum. Well, then you've really seen these people. Oh, am I interrupting? No, 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 Clem. I, I said my piece. I'm on my way. Well, thank you, Doctor. Well, I thought you should know. Well, Roy, I'd like to come back tonight and talk to Moss, if I may. That'll be fine, Doctor. Thanks for coming. Clem. Uh, uh, Mrs. London's having a little party tonight, both Janie and me. We'd both like to have you, Cho, and Haas there. What, a party? I, well, I, gee, I'm, I'm not going to have enough time to get to the ranch and get back and, you know... Well, she knew you were going to say that. She told me to accept no excuses. You can come on as you are. I'll, I'll pick Joe up at the hotel. We'll be there. Fine. All right. Roy? Sit back. Right. Come in. Is that stuff from Sacramento? Oh, good.
congratulations. To a long and happy life, and may all your children have wealthy parents. <laughs> Thank you, Joe. Mm. Just in time, I'm going to make a little longer toast this time. Of course, I have to dive in. There hasn't been too much sunshine in Janie's life. Her mother died when she was born. Her father could never forgive Janie for her mother's death. Who's he now? He died tragically. After that, she was in boarding school for a while and passed back and forth from one relative to another. Then you came along. She should have been with me years ago. Well, look, Club, you've already got your girl. I think I better go find one for myself. I'll see you two later. <laughs> Do we really have to wait, Clem? Oh, Janie, I've got a job to do. If I'd pick up and quit and just walk away, I'd have a hard time finding work as a deputy anywhere else. A new place. I just think it'd be better for both of us. Clem, I'd like to drink to this very happy occasion and wish the both of you the best of luck. Uh, thank you, Roy. Give me that. I swore in a new deputy tonight, but just to keep his eye on the jail so that I could make this celebration. Would you excuse me for a moment, please? Sure. Yes. Hey, that champagne makes a pretty good drink, don't it? Yes, thanks to you. Oh. Will you excuse me for a moment? Sir. What? Uh, excuse me, where's Janie? Oh, she was here. She excused herself. She must be in her room. And I understand the hardware store's gonna change hands. Hmm. Janie? Something bothering her. I guess maybe she thought her nose was shining. You know what I think it is, Roy? I think she's a little nervous about getting married to Clem here. <laughs> <laughs>
Problem, there's nothing you can do. to get organized out there anyway. The army sending over tents are going to set up uh, just at the East Grove there, just outside of town. Mm -hmm. And they're going to set up field kitchens and food and shelter for anybody who needs it. Good. With most of Virginia City burned down, just about everybody's going to need it. Yeah. Where's Clem? but this is one spring that never went dry. We came to the right place. Nothing now. But the grass around here used to be knee-deep this time of the year. That's what I said, we came to the right place. Yeah, I know. But I wish I believed it the way you do. It's all right, I know them. Whenever I'm in this part of the country, I work for them. Till I get the itch to move again. I'll be doggone if it isn't Dusty Rose. Joe Cartwright. Ben, Hoss. How are you, Dusty, Dusty, how are you? Fine and dandy. Jamie? This here's Jamie Hunter. We're traveling together now. Howdy. Good to see you, Jamie. Howdy, Howdy, Jamie. Jamie. I remembered this spring and figured it'd be a good place to fill up for barrel water or horse, but nothing but dust. Yeah. Been like this for about four months. This is the worst drought we've had in years, Dusty. Well, you've still got the lake. Well, it doesn't help the grass on the hills much. People can make it rain. Well. I, I've heard that some people can make it rain, if they know how. Yeah, I've heard some people think they can, but I think it'll rain when it gets good and ready to rain. I hope it gets good and ready real soon. Boys, we better get along and find those strays. Esky, 
You and your young friend here, you come and have supper with us. Well, thank you. See you. Good to see you again. Look forward to it. If the Cartwrights don't think you can make rain, nobody else is going to think so either. But this isn't the only place suffering drought. We'll go on to Carson City and try our luck there. No, we won't. They need rain here in Virginia City, and I'm going to make it. charging two dollars a barrel that was steep well scott since then we've had seven more days without rain and there's always somebody trying to make money out of the misfortunes of others it ain't right no but it's legal why don't you go up and buy a barrel before the price goes up again i got 500 head of stock out there baking in the sun a barrel wouldn't even get me started rain maker the vultures are beginning the circle i don't know i've heard some people make rain i heard spunk water can remove warts did you ever try it never had warts you had a drought like this before Come on, it won't cost us nothing to listen. Well, let's go find a mayor and strike a bargain. Strike a better bargain, let the mayor find you. What makes you think he's looking for us? You see the prices in the water wagon down the street? Yeah. He's looking. You know, Jamie, you put me in mind of a fellow I knew back in Big Springs. No education to speak of, but oh, my, he was smart. To hear him tell it, you'd think he knew more than any man living or dead. Yeah, what's he doing now? 20 years. Your name Garibaldi? That's what it says on the sign, but you can call me Doc. Well, uh, I'm Mayor Corey. What are you doing in Virginia City, Mr. Garibaldi? Well, we're just passing through. Stopped to water the horses. Is that a fact? Well, the troughs are all dry, and so most of the wells are out here. Oh, now, that's a shame. You think so? I said so, didn't I? I guess you've come to fill them up for us. Yeah, all it takes is a little rain. Which you can supply, I suppose. You said that, neighbor. I didn't. As a matter of fact, we're on our way to Colton, Arizona, where they haven't had a drop parade in three months. So we better be on our way. We promised them we'd be there by the end of the month. Just a minute, Doc. Well, minutes make hours, and hours make days, and waiting around here could make me late. Uh, well, we'll only take about 30 minutes of your time, and uh, we'll see that you get some water for your horses. We've been without water here for over four months. Maybe we ought to have a little talk, huh? Talk, talk, or business talk? Business. All right. You got 30 minutes. We can talk in my office. You'd like us to believe that you can uh, make it rain in Virginia City, huh? No, I'm only telling you I can. You can believe what you want. Can you absolutely guarantee you can make it rain? Absolutely. Well, suppose we did believe you. And suppose we was to hire you to perform these services. Just uh, what do you suppose it would cost? Well... Since we're only supposing, I suppose it costs you about $5,000. $5,000? You expect us to pay you $5,000? I don't expect you to pay me a red cent. Where we're going, Colton, Arizona, $5,000 does not bother them any. They need rain, and they know I'll deliver, so they're waiting there with the money in their hands. Jamie? Uh, Mr. Garibaldi, um, Doc, it's just possible that $5,000 does not scare us much either. But we would have to know more if we were going to close the deal. Oh? Mm -hmm. Like what? Well, you could camp on some side hill until we get a natural rain, then come running to collect. Well, you tell me, when do you need the rain? Yesterday. You're wasting my time. We haven't said no yet. You haven't said yes, either. Let's go on down the road. Look, Doc, we don't get rain within two weeks. There won't be anything here worth saving. Two weeks, huh? Oh, I can do that. The sprinkles don't count. It's got to be a real rain. It's got to cover this whole area. Oh, 20 miles in all directions. It's got to be. I wouldn't want the rain to miss Ben Cartwright's place. You uh, say that like you know. Oh, I do. And Hollis and Joe. You a friend of theirs? Well, we're in business together. Partners. Well, why didn't you say so? Martin, you go talk to your neighbors south of town. Right. Garrison, you talk to your neighbors on the north and east. 
I'll line up the local boats. The dock that puts it square up to you. Well, we gotta have a contract first. Just have everybody sign right here at the bottom. <laughs> well, we're all friends here. Well, a man can lose an awful lot of friends in a rainstorm. And then there's a little matter of the advance. What advance? $200 to buy the chemicals and explosives. Chemicals? Explosives? Certainly. We got to blow away the existing weather conditions, frolicance the atmosphere, and create a natural vacuum to be filled by the oncoming rain clouds. And that takes more than two sticks, a pinch of salt, and a loud sneeze. 200 out of city funds. It's money irregular. Here we stand, and down the road, there's folks waiting with money in their hands. Oh, Doc, wait a minute. your advance. Well, thank you, Mayor. I'll be back for that contract tomorrow. Now, what's all this about $200? You told me all the chemicals we need wouldn't cost more than 50 I'm doing this for you. For me? Now, hold on, boy. You gotta buy the lumber to build the tower. $150 worth? Yeah. Just how much tower are you figuring on building? 18 feet and 2 inches high. And strong. And strong, huh? Well, you've come to the right man for the job. Did I ever tell you about the bridge I built across No Bottom Canyon? Yeah, you told me. Now, this better work, or we're going to have an awful lot of sore citizens coming at us. Won't matter. we will never see us. Why not? It'll be raining too hard. If you had one of these that fit me, Fred, one of these dress-up vests, how much would you ask for? Well, this is $1.75, boss. $1.75? Here, here we go. Come on, come on. <laughs> that thing's going sky high. That's not bad. Yeah? Seems a little tight. Well, I have to let it out a little. Yeah. About $1.75. That's just about the same. Oh, hi. Hi, Jamie. Yeah, go ahead and wait on the other side. Now, you look like a boy with a nickel to spend. I bet you want some jelly beans. Uh, no. Licorice whips. Okay, I give up. What do you want? I need some buckets. Oh. Those are solid oak. They won't crack, they won't split, they'll leak, they'll last a lifetime. Good, I'll take ten of them. Ten? Mm -hmm. That's gonna cost you a lot of money. Oh, I've got a lot of money. And more coming. Forty-eight hundred dollars more. You wouldn't want to buy this whole store, would you? <laughs> no. That's what I should have said ten years ago. Oh, you want ten, uh, uh buckets and, uh, is there anything else? Oh, yeah, a whole lot of things. Uh -huh. Um... 20 gallons of turpentine. 20 gallons turps. 15 pounds of sulfur. 15 pounds of sulfur. Um, 20 pounds of soda. 20 pounds of soda. Um, yeah, blasting powder. Oh, that comes in 10 pound cakes. Good, I'll take five. 50 pounds? Mm-hmm. Would you mind my asking, what do you want this stuff for? Atmospheric manipulation. Oh, I guess that explains it. Uh, what, was there anything else? Oh, yeah, yeah. T uh, 20 pounds of salt. 20 pounds of salt. You have that? Yes, uh-huh. Yeah, right, and a bottle of Quicksilver. Quicksilver? Beans. Oh, no, no, we we'll need scoops. How many scoops? Three. Three, three. three scoops. Anything else? Um, let's see. Oh, I need something to stir with. Uh-huh. Big, something big, like an ore. An oar or an oar? Yeah. Well, I've got an oar. Oh, okay, I'll take that. Yeah. Uh, okay. Cups. Okay, four cups. Uh, four cups. You hired a what? A rainmaker, Ben. Said he was a friend of yours, Dr. B. Barnaby Garibaldi, rainmaker. Never heard of him. See? I told you he was a phony. You did not. Well, wait a minute, fellas. There's no harm done, unless you've already paid him for the job. Not a chance. We were going to pay him when it rained. Except for the advance. The advance. How much? Uh, he said he needs some supplies. How much? Uh, chemicals, explosives, uh, $200. Oh. <laughs> All right, where is this miraculous rainmaker? Uh, last time I saw him, he was heading out of town. Towards the Ponderosa. Howdy, Hoss. Oh, howdy, Dusty. It looks, uh, looks like you two are going to stay around for a while. Oh, a couple weeks, more or less. Did you get everything? Got everything. 
Not everything. Where's the grub? That comes to $84.23. Now, are you sure there isn't anything else? Yes. Well, we'll need lumber for the tower. Oh, I've That's got right. that. I've got that out back. Well, let's have a look. I've got all kinds of it. Right through here. Hey, uh, Jamie, explain what... Tell me about the, that uh, manipulation. What is that in here? Oh, I, I'm, I'm going to make it rain. Oh, yeah. yeah I'll see you, Jamie. Okay, bye. Uh, something wrong? Oh, no, 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 they, they ain't nothing wrong. Best of luck, Jamie. Thank you. Here she comes. On the ground, just touching. Just like I said, 18 feet, 2 inches exactly. All right. Well, come on down. We got a lot more to do. One quart of iodine. Fifteen pounds of sulfur. Blasting powder! <laughs> We're in business with a bang! That's the way it's supposed to be. Ten gallons of turpentine. Ten gallons of turpentine? Twenty pounds of soda. Right that could mean trouble. Well, if it is, it's been a mighty short two weeks. You, you wait right here. I'll go talk to him. Howdy, neighbors. Howdy. Something wrong? Or some piece of construction you got there. Yeah, and it had to be exactly the right size. Well, Ben, is he a friend of yours or any? Oh, yes, yes, I know him. What about the advance? Well, anybody's going to build a tower like that sure isn't fixing to run off somewhere. Well, since they're on your land, you can keep an eye on them. I think I'll be getting back to town. It's a comfort to know he's a friend of yours, and you'll vouch for him. I'll, uh... I'll see you back in town. Now. Where'd you learn to build like this? Well, you know that trestle over Walnut Creek? Yeah. Well, I did six months carpentering on that trestle. Did you? Well, what's it for? And what about that? Be Barnaby Garibaldi, Doctor of Precipitative Practices. Now, would you mind explaining to me where you got that rig and that new name? Why, sure, man. Jamie? Everything all right? Everything's fine. You can put the gun away now. Why don't you kick up the fire there and put the coffee pot back on? Holler when it's hot. Is he a relative of yours? No, he's a stray, like me. We kind of got together by accident. Huh? I was coming back from Montana, coming over a high pass, and I found this wagon in a ditch. Jamie was trying to get it out, and Tom Hunter, that's Jamie's daddy, was down sick in the back end of the wagon, and wrapped up in a blanket, freezing one minute and burning up the next. Yeah. Well, I didn't know Tom Hunter very long, but he was one of the best. And he knew he was dying, too, but not a whimper out of him. He was just worried about the boy, and he asked me if I'd take care of him and kind of see that he got a fair share of education. <laughs> Told him I wasn't the man for that job, but he insisted. And you promised to do it? Yeah. But like I said, he was one of the best. Coffee's ready. Be right there. Better responsibility to take out. Oh, it ain't been too bad so far. Probably strong enough to float a bullet, but that's the way my pa liked it. Yeah. Oh, yes, it's strong, all right. 
You old enough to drink coffee? If I'm old enough to take care of myself, I'm old enough to drink coffee. I'm old enough to take care of him, too. Now, just a minute. You're mighty confused, aren't you? I'm taking care of you, remember? Well, I might have might confused. Now, you're Dusty Rhodes, and you're Jamie Hunter. Who's this Dr. Garibaldi? Nobody, really. The name just kind of goes along with the wagon and the boat. And Dusty's a bad name for a rain maker. <laughs> yeah, it sure is. Now, what makes you so all fire certain that you can make rain? <laughs> I'm not sure, but he is. It's on the book, Mr. Cartwright. My pa wrote it all down, step by step. Well, son, I, I sure don't mean to be disrespectful to your father. I just don't believe that it's possible to shape or twist nature to make it do whatever you want it to. I'm sure you can. You can dam up a stream and water a field. You can plow up the ground and spread fertilizer around and plant corn where nature's growing nothing but weeds and wildflowers. Well, of course, you can do that in the ground, but you can't make rain out of the sky. No, no more than you can make corn out of the ground. But you can plow the ground plant the seed. Jimmy, this is not a game. This is serious, dangerous business. Look around you. It's tinted dry as far as the eye can see. We haven't had rain here in four months. And people are upset. Now, they can't take their frustrations out against nature. But if someone like you comes along, you say you're going to make rain, they believe you. And then you cannot make rain. They can sure take it out on you. We get hired, Mr. Cartwright. We're gonna make rain. Thanks for the coffee. You shouldn't have talked to him like that. He's much as said my pa was a liar. Now, hold on, boy. He said there are some things a man can't change, and the weather might just possibly be one of them. My pa was right, and I'm gonna prove it. Oh, now, listen, Jamie. You gonna try to talk me out of it, too? It'd be a waste of my breath. That's right. But I'll tell you something. If you don't start being a little nicer to people, I'm gonna turn you over my knee. And another thing, it's about time you started to learn a little yes, sir, and no, sir, and thank you very much, sir. You think so? I know so. All right. What? I said all right. All right what? All right, sir. That's better. Yes, sir. No, sir. Thank you very much. What'd you say? Nothing. I'll be very honest, Corey. I don't think there's a man alive who can make rain. It's not a happy thought, then. No, it sure isn't. We got to let him try, then. Things are desperate now. Getting worse by the minute. Not so bad for you, man. You got a whole lake full of water. Yes, and no grass. Well, I've got a little of either, and I'm willing to try anything. All right, but don't get your hopes up too high. Well, you're the one who vouched for them. I didn't vouch for their ability to make rain. Well, if it don't rain, you were right. If it does, you get the benefit without paying. Gentlemen, if it rains within the next two weeks, I'll be more than happy to pay my share. Thank you.
those chemicals. What's going on here? We're preparing to sow the seeds, Ben. One minute. And what are you doing all this? Why don't you just stop it before it goes any further? Well, I don't know how we can do that, short of tying him in the back of the wagon and riding him out of the country. Look, I got a book here that a friend of mine gave me in town. It's all about frauds and confidence games, and there's a whole chapter here about rainmakers. Now, we can prove to him that he cannot make rain. It won't make a bit of difference. Oh, we can prove it. Ben, all you've got is a book that says he can't. He's got a book that says he can. Now, just what have we proved? Dusty, this book was written by an authority. And his book's written by his paw. Well, his paw was wrong. But Ben, he's heard all that. He's heard his dad called a charlatan, a fraud, a scoundrel. He's seen him run off and chased away. Why, he's even seen him tarred and feathered and ridden out of town on a rail. Well, then he knows that it's dangerous. <sighs> Better than either one of us. That's what killed his daddy. You saw all this? Yeah. They worked Jamie over with the willow switch while they were at it. When his paw died, Jamie latched onto that book and set out to make it rain with a vengeance. I guess he's trying to prove to the whole world that those people were wrong and his daddy was right. All right, Jamie. What are you doing here? Well, I, uh... I just, uh, came out of there. Why? You don't believe in anything I'm doing. It's just that we have different opinions, Jamie. I know we do. Why do you want to help? Well, they asked me in town to come out here and keep an eye on you. And, well, as long as I'm out here, I might as well help. Well, as long as you're here. Come here, Dusty. We got lots of work to do. We're wasting time. Remind me to teach him how to say please. Cloud, I wouldn't come anywhere near that noise. I said I'd pay my share, but I'm beginning to wonder. You know, I've seen that Doc Garibaldi someplace before, but I don't remember him being partners with the car, right? He said he was. What do you figure he's doing up there anyway? Wasting our time and our money. You finished eating? Yeah. You never even touched it. I wasn't very hungry. Jamie, the ink on that page isn't going to fade. It's still going to be there in 20 minutes. Now you eat. Howdy, Jamie, Dusty. Howdy, Oz. What brings you way out here? Oh, I thought I'd just sort of come out and show a few fellows. How about a cup of coffee? Hey, that sounds good. As a matter of fact, I was hoping you'd invite. Hey, uh, Jamie. Do you sure enough believe for real that you'd make it rain? Darned right, I can't. I mean, it's all right here in the book. Yeah? Hey, uh, read me some of that, huh? Here you go. What you got there, Hoss? Oh, this? It's, uh, what is it? It's an umbrella. I, I, uh, I bring it out to Jamie. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Read me, boy. Read me. <laughs> all right. Clouds must be the rainmaker. Why well, would gunpowder and cooking up stinks that would shame a skunk? He said two weeks and it ain't been but 13 days. And I got water holes full of dust and cattle dying. Maybe it ain't real thunder. Rain's what he promised. We better get it by tomorrow. That Garibaldi's gonna phase with it by lightning. Nine. Here's the soda. That's ordinary soda. Use that in a rainmaking mixture? Mm-hmm. Use salt, too. And sulfur and turpentine and 
things people keep in their pantry shelf. If it ain't what it's in it, it's knowing how to use it. We'll take it up to the tower, Dusty. There's a lot of stars up there. The clouds will come. You'd be surprised how fast they pile up once they start. Well, I'll tell you, if the rain doesn't come. I still got the rest of the night and all day tomorrow. It's gonna rain, Mr. Cartwright. If it ain't cloud up come morning, I still have pause emergency page. His what? His emergency page. Getting the air ready takes two weeks sometimes. If it ain't raining by then, you can just double the batches. Or every time Pa uses it. Well, I better get to the tower. Sleeping. I'm wide awake. So am I. Well, if neither one of us can sleep, I'll keep you company. I used to sit up on the tower with Pa and watch him work. Sometimes I'd go to sleep. Next morning, wake up in the back of the wagon. Didn't even remember him picking me up and moving me. He was a genius, you know. He really could make it rain. People just didn't understand. They thought he was trying to cheat him or something. That's what you think, isn't it? Well, I'm willing to be shown. Well, I'm going to show you. My pa was a genius, and I'm going to prove it. Be getting some sleep. That's right. But you call me as soon as it gets light. Crack a dog. Huh? Yeah. We are. I've done it before. 
Pa used to wake me up. For a minute, I thought you were Pa. I, I was dreaming about grass flat. I, I, could, I could smell the tar boiling. And they were coming at us from every place. And tar and feathers. That's what they did to my Pa. You better get some rest now. Tomorrow's a big day, Jamie. I'll go tend to things. You try to get some rest, Jamie. There were, there were rain making jobs after Grass Flat. We'd just get started. The drunks would come and call my pa a fool and a cheat, and, and, and lots worse. And we'd run. My pa was sick and shaking, and, and we just couldn't wait for the air was ready. And, well, I ain't running. Of course you're not. Come on, lie down. I ain't running. Come morning, I'm going to show everybody. I'm going to double the badges, and I'm going to show everybody that my pa knew how to make it rain. Of course you will. Come on, I'll lie down. Come morning. You'll see. Come morning. Breakfast, two bites for dinner. That boy makes a sparrow look like a hearty eater. He's worried. He's not alone. I never was a believer, but I admit I did a lot of hoping. you're thinking. What if you do? You know, I wish it was raining. Thanks. It's only four o'clock. I, I got till midnight. You got eight hours. Enough time for three batches, but I ain't got enough stuff to make even one. What do you need? Soda, turpentine. We've got some of the Ponderosa. I'll get some for you. Why? You, you don't believe I can make it rain? I'll try to be back by dark, maybe a little after. Where's the rain? We've been trying, day and night. It ain't midnight yet, I have. You shut your mouth, boy. Dr. Garibaldi, huh? I finally remember where I seen you before. You was partners with Hoss and Joe in that livery stable deal. Yeah, we was learning the business from the ground up. Got a wise mouth. But he ain't no doctor, and his name ain't Garibaldi. 
I never said it was. That's what you led us to believe, the same thing. You already stole 200. You was hoping to steal a lot more. Now we're going to fix it so you don't do that to nobody again. Start wrecking it, boys. Now, hold on here. You got no right to... What's that, Doc? You let him alone. I'm the Rainmaker. Look who's talking. Is your name Garibaldi? No, but I'm the Rainmaker. You're a half pint of nothing, boy. You better find yourself a hole and hide. You want to get walked on. Stay out of this, Jamie. Get moving, boys. Wait! It's all in here. My pa wrote it all down. He was a rainmaker. He taught me. What are you talking about, boy? It, it, my pa knew what he was talking about. He wrote it all down in the book. Let me see that. Give me my book! Hey, you! Give me my... Hold it. Now, give that boy his book. And then clear out of here, all of you. You heard me? Now, give that boy his book. And then clear out. folks that hired us to make rain. Scott was one, and Garrison. I'm sorry, Jamie. Just a bunch of burnt pages. What's to be sorry about? Jim, I'm going to take you home. No problems in that wagon, Mr. Cartwright. Besides, I can't leave Dusty. Oh, and Dusty will come along with us. I didn't run. I said I wouldn't run, and I didn't. No, you didn't run. I didn't cry. I'm too big to cry. That's right. You're too big to cry. Two minutes to ten. And two hours ahead of when we call us. and battery, destruction of property. There's enough here to keep a court busy for a solid month. Actually, I guess you're not going to be able to leave as soon as you thought. Anyway, there's not too much work for a rainmaker these days. And with a muddy road, it's not going to be easy to travel. 
I'm used to bad roads. Well, you gotta stick around till the uh, wagon is fixed. We're gonna take care of your wagon for you. Wheels, axle paint, be as good as new. Or better. New sign, too. What about my pa's book? I guess you can't put that back together again, can you? No way we can. But we're mighty sorry about it. Save you the trouble of having to tell us what happened. Might as well get on with it. We hired ourselves a rainmaker. Rain in two weeks, and we don't have to pay for it. Night before last, rain started at 10 o'clock, two hours before the time ran out. We ain't denying the rain, but we sure didn't hire a boy to make it. You hired Dusty and me and my pa's book. We did get rain, and it did come just before the contract time ran out. For them is one to argue. I got documents here charging trespass, assault and battery, destruction of property, and sundry other crimes. Seven pages. Well, we did make a mistake. We're willing to set it straight. Pay for the rain, too, just like we agreed. And Jenny, it's up to you. They're gonna say my pa made it rain. I just did what he put in the book. Pa made it rain. Your pa made it rain, son. And we're willing to put it in right. <sighs> Mr. Cartwright's already paid to his share of the rain. And as soon as the rest of us do likewise, we can forget about the warrants and charges. <laughs> before you can leave. Gotta get that wagon fixed up and get all the money collected. Uh, Dusty's gonna work with us in the Ponderosa. You're uh, welcome to stay just as long as you'd like. Well, not much on taking favors, but... Well, I could stay for a while, if I could pay for board. Well, I'll tell you what. We'll find you a bunch of chores to make it come out even, huh? All right. Hey, this is beginning to clear up. So me and little Joe put up five hundred dollars and bought ourselves two thirds of a going enterprise. Five hundred dollars? That's right. And Greeley's gonna run the place for us. Yeah, and all we gotta do is just sit back and collect two thirds of the profit. <laughs> How long have you two been in this saloon business? About four weeks. And this is the first you tell me about. It's the first time we saw it. We didn't want to spoil everything. Yeah, and we wanted you to see it too, Paul. Well, I know a little bit about the cattle business and horse business and lumber, but I'm afraid saloons aren't in my line. Mr. Greeley says it's going to be a regular gold man. Just look at the business they're doing here. All right, let's take a look inside. Yeah. David, take the horses. Howdy. Oh, H. Turner? I thought you said the man's name was Greeley. Old man Greeley? Oh, his place is down the street, hon. Thank you. Trails End. Certainly well named. Heavens. Oh, boy. Coal mine. You sure Greeley didn't say coal mine? Oh, you can't judge a place from first impressions. Well, how many impressions do you need? 
Jamie. Uh, Jamie, why don't you wait for us outside? There's no place for you to be. Well, I was just taking a look. I said, hey, Jamie, go on. Do like Paul says. Ain't fitting a boy your age to be gawking at fancy women. Us. Yeah. We made a mistake. Joe, you ain't even given a half a chance yet. <sighs> Customers? <laughs> oh, you're Mr. Greeley. Greeley? No, 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 sirs. I, sirs, am Darius Dalrymple, your bartender and servant. <laughs> sure, sure you wouldn't like a drink, gentlemen? No. Okay. Yeah. Mmm. Oh, that's marvelous. <laughs> I buy it over at the Golden Spurs Saloon. 25 cents a shot, straight whiskey. Good stuff. You sure you don't want any? Uh, no, where is Mr. Greeley? Oh, he's he's over at Snedeker's. That's the funeral parlor. Well, what's he doing at the funeral parlor? He's a client. Boys, uh, look, uh, you take my advice right now. You get rid of this place immediately. Understand? Yes, sir. And the moment you do, meet us in Carson City. Yeah. Paul, uh, best of luck with Miss Frost. I don't think you're going to need it, but... Well, good luck to you, too. I'm afraid you will. Hey, you're Mr. Greeley's partners. Well, you, you mustn't sell. You, you mustn't. Why not? Well, you can make yourself a tidy profit from this establishment. It would be the only thing tidy in this place. Excuse me, my customer. Howdy, partner. <laughs> oh, <laughs> French, French, you don't speak English. <laughs> you speak French? Not so as you can notice it, no. See, I told you, you can make yourself a tidy profit from this establishment. Wait a minute, wait a minute. that's 15 cents. You told me you paid 25 cents a shot for the whiskey. Yeah, well, that's all French you can afford. Oh. Hey, seeing as how you're Greeley's partners and all, don't you think we should go over and pay our last respects to poor Jebediah? And maybe I'll tell you something about Trail's End. Maybe. Oh, I think I know everything about Trail's End I need to. Uh, wait a minute, little brother. Maybe we ought to go over and pay our last respects to our ex-partner. Huh? What about him? Huh? Oh, he's all set. He only buys the one drink. Good, all we can lose is a dime. Rest in peace, Shebediah. You know, I was all he had in the world. Poor and neglected soul. Speaking of neglect, Mr. Snedeker, Mr. Snedeker, I strongly object to Mr. Greeley being stashed away in a back room like, like a floor mop. Well, I'm certainly not going to put a saloon keeper in my front parlor. Well, you got Reuben Lucas out front, and Jebediah is just as good a man as Lucas. He's just as dead. I'm sure you understand my position. I'm president of the local temperance league. Hmm. I trust you're in sympathy with the anti-saloon movement. Well, we, uh, we try to see both sides of it. <laughs> Mrs. Lucas, you must be brave. Mrs. Lucas runs the boarding house. Two dollars a day in advance, dinners at six. <laughs> <laughs> young lady, <clears throat> young lady, contain yourself. I can't help it. I loved him so much. <laughs> Who are you, girl? I'm his daughter. <laughs> Who are you? Well, I guess I'm your mother, seeing as how this is my husband laid out here. Oh. Now, 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 there must be some explanation. What's your name, young lady? Ellen Sue Greeley. An innocent case of mistaken identity. Oh. <laughs> this way, oh. Miss Greeley, and my condolences. Greeley's daughter? Jebediah never said nothing about having a daughter. Don't you think it's kind of strange she doesn't recognize her own father? Oh, no, it, it happens all the time. When a loved one passes away, the survivor sometimes goes into shock. Grief unhinges the mourner's mind. Yeah, I suppose you're right. Besides, they all sort of look alike once they're in the box. 
Mr. Mr. Cartwright. May I call you by your first name? Oh, yeah, yeah, Joe. Thank you. Mr. Cartwright, I'm about to impart something to you that I've never breathed to another living soul. There, 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 my dear. You must be brave now. Oh, I'll be all right. I have to be. I intend to operate my father's salute. Well, of course you will. He, he, he would have wanted it that way. Told me so many times. This place is kind of a mess right now. You, you, you got a nice place to stay? I've checked into the boarding house. My boarding house? What do you think, Joe? Do you think Helen Sue could make a go up? Oh, what? We got one customer and we lose 10 cents every time he comes in. Oh, come on, be serious. I mean, she's all alone in the world. I think we ought to give her a chance. Yeah, I'll drink to that. I figured you would. Are you gonna, you're gonna tell her to keep me on? Why not? Gentlemen, may I say, may I say that there has not been a finer display of generosity towards one's fellow man? Since old Abe delivered his second inaugural address. No, no, sir, that's... Oh, welcome to Trails End, Miss Greeley. Oh, so this is my poor dear daddy's place. Uh, Miss Greeley, uh, congratulations. We're going to let you run this saloon. Oh, oh, thank you. I'm so delighted. And you know what? I come with the place. It's not much help, but it's hard running a saloon. Oh, well, we Greeleys are used to hard work back in Boston. Boston? I thought your pa was from Philadelphia. Phil back in Philadelphia, yes. We, we learned how to work hard. How long did you live in Philadelphia? Oh, five, six. Fourteen years. Fourteen years, right. And I was just a small thing then, but I can remember my mama saying, Jeremiah, she said, we really ought to move out west. Be what I say. Well, we thought your pa's name was Jebediah. Well, of course, but we had this little joke. You see, when I was small, I couldn't pronounce Jebediah, so we called him Jeremiah, and you don't believe a word of this, do you? No. No. I didn't think so. Okay. And I want you to tell us what you're up to, huh? Uh, I don't know. Somebody hired me to pose as what's his name? Greeley's daughter. Who? I don't know that either. I never met him. Honest. Would I lie to you? I think you better tell us the whole story. Well, my real name is Ellen Sue Carpenter, and this man I never met before sent me this letter of instructions. Where did you meet this contact in the first place? Uh, through the Tustin Flats jail. Ah, uh, this fellow was in jail, huh? No, I was in jail. You see, I was selling bottled water and calling it the Fountain of Youth of Tustin Flats. Told everybody I was 100 years old. Don't laugh, I was doing just fine until... One day, something, somebody happened to say something about the 49 gold rush, and I wasn't thinking, and I said that was before my time. I'm always doing dumb things like that. Why would anybody want you to pretend that you were Greeley's daughter? I, I wasn't told. The letter just said I would get a big cash bonus if I could just do it right. Somebody's after Trail's End, that's what. Yeah, I suppose so, because the letter of instructions said that I was to be sure to say I wanted to take over the saloon. Why? Well, whoever this party is figures they can get it for nothing, that's why. I think it's a fair price. Well, whoever this mysterious party is, if they want to go to all this trouble to get it, maybe they put up some money. I think we can smoke them out, little Joe. Tustin Fly's not that far away. Let's give it a try. Let's go. That's for you, young lady. I know, I know. Back to jail. No, we're not going to prosecute. Just go and con no more. Dearie? Yeah? Listen, I'm, I'm, I'm about to impart a secret to you that I have never breathed to another living soul. Oh, well, I wonder if you could breathe it from a little farther back. But, but first, you got to agree that we're partners. I, I mean, word of honor. But you got it. <laughs> You know, you, you seem like a very enterprising young lady. <laughs> if you could get your hands on $500, buy out the Cartwrights, yeah. I'll split the Greeley fortune with you. Why don't we split the fortune first, and then I'll buy them out? Well, I haven't found it. <laughs> you know, I know what you're thinking. This man's a drunk. You're right. That's right. That's exactly Ms. what I was saying. Carpenter, may, may I call you drunk. Ellen Sue? 
Thank you. Miss Carpenter, old Jebediah, he hid a fortune here someplace, and I'm going to find it. You see, your father, bless his gentle memory. He wasn't my father. That's uh, good. You wouldn't have liked him. Mean old codger. Loved to torment a person, you know? He, he kept giving me those devilish hints about the loot. He said, keep, keep searching, Darius. Keep looking. It's, it's close enough to spit at. He never flat out said where it was. He just, just, he just torment me with them hints. Well, little by little, I'm remembering. Yes, sir, every, every day I, I recollect a bit more. And one day, when I, when I put it all together, Eureka! What's a Eureka? It means I've found it. Mm. Which you haven't. And which you won't, because there really isn't any money. There never is, I know. No, 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 you're, you're, you're wrong. You're wrong, miss. No. You're wrong. If you could get your hands on $500. I don't have $5. As a matter of fact, I was sort of counting on maybe you would loan me some money to pay my board and stage fare out of here. Me? About $50. <laughs> 40 <laughs> 30 I don't have a penny. <laughs> Listen, I mean, if you, you're in a hurry to catch a stage out of here, why haven't you got anything you can sell? Uh-huh. Our secret. Oh, I know a lot of people would pay high money for information like that. Oh. Hey, that's, 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 out, that's outrageous. Yeah. I, I mean, that's, that's, that's low and <laughs> you're right. mean and it's, 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 it's uns. Unscrupulous. You took the word right out of my mouth. Well, I'll do it, and you'll have a regular gold rush in here, and somebody's going to find that fortune before you do. You wouldn't. No, thirty dollars would protect our secrets. It's cheap at twice the price. <laughs> I, mean, I, I got some. I got something here. Here, here, here. Look at this. This is what pack my mama gave me. Look at that. Seventy dollars oh, if oh, it's worth a cent. Mr. Dalrymple. Mm -hmm. Try again. What? Uh, well, I, I got something here for you. Oh, wait a minute. There you are. Protect yeah. yourself. You better come up with something. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Hey. No, some things is sacred. Here, here. Oh. Look at that, huh? How about that, huh? What am I going to do with that? Well, she sold it to Miss Lucas. Look good in her dining room. The, the frame alone is worth $5. Yeah. Hmm? Losers can't be choosers, as they say. Thank you. Thank you. It's a secret, you know. Shh. Hmm? Uh, how long will it take to complete the arrangements, Mr. Blakely? Well, with a cattle deal of this magnitude, I'd say approximately, uh, precisely, three days, Miss Frost. Very well. Fetch the pen, Mr. Blakely. <laughs> Uh, Miss Frost, this is a rather large transaction that you would like to examine a few of the specimens of our cattle. Oh, not necessary. It's a man's character that has to stand up under scrutiny. Uh -huh. And may I say that I've heard nothing but good things about the Cartwrights. Thank you. And rest assured, I inquired. I had hoped to meet your two sons before I returned to the East. Well, you may still be able to. They're not too far from here. Yeah, they're in Upright. In what? Upright, that's a town. They have a saloon there. J saloon? Uh, Miss Frost. The impeccable Cartwrights, traffic in demon rum. <sighs> Miss Frost, the, the boys impulsively went into a, a business venture. Of course, saloons are not on the Cartwright line. Do uh, they? Or do they not own a saloon? Well, very soon, uh, they will not. I've advised them to sell. Did you now? I'll uh, send them a wire in the morning. The telegraph office is open now, sir. Hey, Tally Ramble, what the? Cut that out. How are we going to sell this place if you tearing it apart like that? Sell? Sell? You, you, you got a buyer? Well, we got a couple of prospects. So put that stove back together again. Mr. Cartwright, sir? May I, may I call you Hoss? Well, I reckon so. Thank you. Mr. Cartwright? 
I am about to impart a secret to you that I have never breathed to another living soul. Cool. You got a telegram here for Cartwright? Yo. Thank you. There it is. I'm shut down for the night, so if you answer that, it'll have to wait till morning. That morning will be good enough. No. Uh, meaning no disrespect, but your paw's all wrong. What about what? Oh, this is a good town for two young fellas to start a business in. <laughs> Boss, just got a telegram from Pa. We got to sell this place and quick. All right? Yeah, wait a few seconds. Well, we ain't selling. Can you maintain this schedule if we decide to use the Kansas City stockyards? Well, we'll find out as soon as we make the first shipment. If, Mr. Cartwright. I beg your pardon? If you make your first shipment. We haven't gone into business with you yet. Well, Miss Frost, let me reassure you. I would like to have you reassure me. There's a telegram for you. Oh, thank you. What I've been waiting for. There's been a uh, slight delay in upright. Better send those boys another wire immediately. Tell them they have 48 hours to divorce themselves from that depraved enterprise. 48 hours. Very good. Mr. Cartwright, I shall want to see the bill of sale. Just listen to me for one Joseph, minute. you can just forget about it now. My mind's made up. I ain't gonna sell. We but ain't God selling this sent us a wire, and he wants us to get out from under this place. Joseph, that was before he knew about the fortune. Oh, the fortune. Now, that's fairy tale talk. There's no fortune in this Wait till Dolly Ripple comes in, and you ask him yourself. Did you say wait till he comes in, or wait till he comes to? Come on, we'll get some breakfast. old hag what about my luggage you'll get it when you can pay your bill with respectable cash I don't beat all. How'd our pitcher get out here, you reckon? Look, will you just listen to me? Dill, will you lay off me last time I've had some breakfast? Look, how can you think about it? We got some problems, you know? Here, walk me down, huh? Ain't it, lady? Ain't it? Get out of here and keep it out. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Oh, Mr. Cartwright. Telegraph. Thank you. Oh, great. Great. Here we go again, huh? From Pop. Imperative, you sell saloon today. Stop. Wire me when sale accomplished. Joe, just do me one favor, will you? Talk to Dollar. Oh. Good morning. Here we go. <laughs> oh. Oh. oh, thank, thank you. Oh, I'm, I'm, I beg your pardon. I'm, I'm, I must have dozed off. <laughs> yeah, you spent the night there, Dolly Ripple. Oh. Hey, uh, Tell Joe about the Greeley fortune. The, the Greeley what? It's all right. You can talk to him. He's my brother. Tell him about it. Mr. Cartwright, have you been drinking? No, I ain't been drinking, but I'm getting a mite riled up. Last night, you stood right over there by that stove, and you told me about a fortune that old Greeley had stashed in this here saloon. <laughs> I said that? Yeah, and you said something else. You said he said something very special, that that, that fortune was so close that a man could spit on it. And that's how come you was tearing up that stove, because old Greeley was always sitting there spitting on that stove. How gross. Uh, all right, let's make it short and sweet, Mr. Dalrymple. Is there or isn't there a fortune hidden here someplace? I thought only children believed in fantasies, Mr. Cartwright. Oh, they do. Dalrymple! Last night, you... I'll go get you a drink. Maybe that'll help you remember. Oh, no, thank you. I've given it up. Good morning, fellas. Look who's here, the hundred-year-old woman. 
Now, is that any way to talk to a girl who's going to arrange to take this place off your hands? Keep your money in your pocket, your hand on your billfold, Joe. I'm serious. I ran into my mysterious party. I mean, face to face? And he has authorized me to buy trails in from you. Well, how come he don't just come out in person and deal with us? Never mind. I, he's a very proper gentleman, and he's very sweet. Yeah, well, why don't you just tell this mysterious, sweet, proper gentleman of yours that if he'll give us $600, we'll give him trails in? Oh, uh, well, what if I could get more than $600? I, I think $600 is plenty. I'll tell you what, now. I'll keep him dangling, and anything over $600, we split 50-50. Honey, if you can get over $600 for this place, you deserve the money. Ignore first wire, expect sale, and nice profit, Joe. Well, that makes me feel better. <laughs> I guess you're worried for nothing, huh? Well, horses so easily persuaded to get into things, but Joe brings them down to earth. Yeah. Hey, Jimmy, do you think you could ride out to Upright tomorrow, get the bill of sale, and bring it back on the same day? Sure, Pa. Good boy. Mm. Jebediah, no, where, 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 where was it you said it was, huh? Don't chase after the dollar now, Rebel. The man who chases after the dollar never fights. That's it. That's it. <laughs> it's not dollars, no. Maybe, it, maybe it's, maybe it's gold. But where, 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 where? Oh, come on. Think, Dalrymple, think. Let me see. Let me see now. Greeley? Greeley was standing right there. Ever hear the story of the man who was looking for acres of diamonds now, Ripple? Search the world. Search the world. And they were right in his backyard all the time. Right under his feet. Diamonds! That's it, diamonds. Joe, what is that? Oh, yeah. Hmm. Oh. It's probably just mice. Well, dang mice are big as coats. Mm -hmm. The noisiest place I ever tried to sleep in. Like that. Never fell asleep. You all right? until you demolished it. Why did you do that? I'm sorry. I, I apologize, but I don't remember anything. Of course, if I'm responsible in any way, why just, just take it out of my salary? Daddy Rebel, we don't pay you no salary. Thanks for the drink. Mm. It's just what I needed to get my strength back. Drink? Why, that's a six one aboard for you. Now, you go on back to Trails End. I've got a lot of business to take care of. Mr. Turner? <laughs> what? Mr. Turner? Can I call you Charlie? Call me anything, but just stay on your feet and move along. Thank you, Mr. Turner. I, I got a proposition to make. Now, I want you to buy Trails End and, and make you my partner. I mean, make me your partner. <laughs> Why, of course, Dalrymple. And by the way, uh, what's in it for me? Quar quarter? About quarter of a million dollars. <laughs> quarter of a million... Quarter of a million dollars. Mr. Turner? Mr. Turner, I am about to impart a secret to you that I have never breathed to another living soul. And then one night, Mr. Greeley, he says to me, you want to know where the loot is? Just ask. Just ask. 
Ask who, Dalrymple? Ask who? I can't remember. My head's clearing. Yeah, have another drink. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ask a fat lady, that's what he said. Ask a fat lady. Who's the fat lady? Shh, shh, I know, I know who he meant. It's the woman in the painting over the bar. Yeah, Ripple, a painting can't talk. I know. But what he meant was the clues in the picture. Get it. Hey. Ah! He said, ask the fat lady. Okay, we're asking. Her eyes. Follow the direction of her eyes. Chandelier. It's in the chandelier, boys! That's not it. That's not the chandelier. Her foot's pointing to the wall. There it is. Here. I got it. I got it. I got it. No, it's not first. Let me get it. Oh, there it is. Nice star. Sure. I know I've been thinking of settling down in Upright. Well, I thought you couldn't wait to be moving on, Ellen, too. <laughs> That's for you. There's some nice people in this town. What'd you do if you stayed here and not open a saloon, I hear? I might open a restaurant where folks could get a good meal, like veal parmesan and chicken cacciatore and ravioli and European cuisine. Mm. European? <laughs> Them's Italian. Well, Italy's in Europe, isn't it? Well, anyway, it's the only fancy food I know how to cook. I grew up in an Italian neighborhood back east. <clears throat> well, let's get down to business. Good. What did you say you wanted for Trails End? Please, just make us an offer. Fourteen hundred. <laughs> Not good enough, you say? Fifteen hundred. Fifteen hundred? Well, let's not haggle. Sixteen hundred. <laughs> Now, wait, 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 wait a minute, I want to sue. I mean... Joe, Hoss, listen, there's a bunch of people over there. They're tearing your saloon apart. What? Well, it seems there's a fortune hit there, and everybody's after it. Ain't nothing like it. Money will do to people. Uh, speaking of money, my client still wants to buy this place. Uh, you, you better sell before there isn't anything left to sell. Well, it's fine by me. Sixteen hundred, right, Joe? Right. Joe? What? I say we'll sell for sixteen hundred dollars, right? Wrong. Wrong? Trails End is not for sale at any price. Joseph. Well. I think we've covered every possible contingency. Except for the binding contract. And we know what that is contingent upon. Now, Miss Frost, you saw the telegram for yourself. And Jamie should be here at any time now with the bill of sale. It's a telegram for you, Mr. Cartwright. Well, what? I'll, 
Well, uh, I'll have to ride out to write to myself. It's been an unforeseen complication. Mr. Cartwright, unless I have written proof by 10 o'clock tomorrow morning that you and yours no longer own a saloon, we should be disaffiliated. You may go with him, Mr. Blakely. Uh, oh, thank you, Miss Frost. Keep looking, keep looking. Come on, Jamie, get that worried look off your face. You're not in any trouble with Pa. We said come right back with that bill of sale, which I don't have. We ain't sold a place yet. Until we sell it, we can't have a bill of sale. Well, will you stop worrying about Pa's deal with Miss Frost? It's meaningless. How can you compare that with a half a million dollars buried in here someplace? All you gotta do is think. We'll find it. Jamie. You've been told about looking at indecent oh, pictures. Hoss, I was just looking for clues. You said the clue was in the picture someplace. Yeah, we'll, we'll look for the clues once you get some sleep. Huh? Oh, come on, Joseph. Wait a minute. I think I got it. Got what? It's the frame, Joe. That's solid gold, I'll bet. What? Looks like it. Hey, maybe he's got some. I'll be dead, burn right in front of our eyes all the time. That's, that's what Greeley used to say. Thou hast eyes to see, and thou seest not. <laughs> Jamie, boy, I think you struck gold. <laughs> Let's take it to the air, Joe. You bet. Pure gold. Look like gold. I'm sorry. Well, I don't have a sir as the assayer was when we woke him up in the middle of the night. Well, let's get some sleep. Yeah. Now I remember, won't you go home? We'll find it the first time. Find Dalrymple and go over this place inch by inch. Hey. What's that? We've got half the town out there. Well, I'm not going to wreck the place this time. against myself. It's not fair. Dar Ripple swore he'd never breathe it to another soul. Hey, where is Dolly Ripple? $8,500. $9,000. $95,000. $10,000. It's not for sale at any price. Well, wait a minute. We own the place. It's all right. It's all right. I'll cut you in, but but it's it's mostly mine. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody said something about ten thousand dollars. Right. Speak right okay, up, don't be bashful. Sir, what about seven? You, sir? Six? How about five thousand? Anybody? Five thousand? That's, that's a lot of buildings for five thousand. How about four thousand? Even if you go in the signs and everything. Hi, Paul. Well, it is, Paul. Hi, Paul. It's a long story, Paul. I'm sure it is. How much time do we have left, Mr. Blakely? Less than an hour. I want you to abandon this place, burn it down, give it away. I'm afraid Miss Frost doesn't do business that way. She wants a legitimate bill of sale. 
There's a te telegraph office down the street if you wanted to maybe send her a telegram. Thank you. I don't have to be so greedy. I'm trying to take advantage of poor Mr. Snedeker. Seven, I got it. Of course, when you think about it, he wasn't very honest either. He said, no, I don't want to sell it. He was really pretty sneaky. I think he owes me an apology. This isn't worth anything, and I could have gotten $10,000. Frenchy, I'm sorry, but we're closed. I mean, we're closed forever. It's all over. Dollar Rimple. Give him a drink. Give him, give him all he wants. Jamie, out. Uh, I was just uh, out. Wait outside. Excuse me. Uh, don't say anything. I just had a long talk with myself. I should have sold the place when we had a chance. Well, I just hope we didn't blow the deal for Paul with this frost. Yeah, well, I'm afraid we did. Unless we can find somebody to buy this place. Dally Rample. You're the man that needs to own the saloon. At a real good price, $100. $50? Hmm? We'll own you the money. Mr. Cartwright? Just call me Hoss. Thank you. Mr. Cartwright, I'm about to impart a secret to you that I have never breathed to another living soul. No. There's just got to be somebody we can... Be careful, there won't be anything left to sell in this place. I'll fix it. Dad, burn it. We got to find somebody who's dumber than we are, Joe. Morning, Mr. Cartwright. You ought to be more careful. Uh, there's a law against messing up the streets around here. Uh, good morning, Sheriff. You're just the man we're looking for. Have you ever thought about going into business for yourself? It's not, it's not really as crazy an idea as it sounds. You know, the salon business, Sheriff, happens to be a wonderful business. People love to drink. Oh, they do it all the time. As a matter of fact, have you been inside this place lately? Yeah, it, it doesn't look great right from the outside. Absolutely. It's a little grim here, a little orange. 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 And when you hired me to buy that saloon, you didn't mention there was a treasure hidden there. Turns out there wasn't. Serves you right. You were trying to swindle the Cartwrights, and me too. But that's why I hired you. You were in jail for swindling. That was different. I was working for myself. I apologize. I accept. If I could have five or ten minutes of your time. What for? I want to express my admiration both for you and for a very good idea that you had. Well, it doesn't hurt to listen. What else can I say to you? How are you going to beat the price? Ten dollars. Look at this. Have you just sold a place for fire? Would you double your money? Well, you might be right. You got the deed? You bet I do. I, I like to think on things before I make up my mind. I tell you what, I'll let you know. When? Oh, end of the week. But That's right. The week. We, we got a lot of like this last year. Sure. You yeah. got to get this deal right. So yeah, I'll let you know. But you... You know that restaurant we were talking about? Well, it's not now. Will you please? We got problems of our own. You big, 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 Grazie. French is Italian. You understand what he's saying? Yeah. Hey, ask him a question for me, will you? What? Ask him why he comes in a rat hole like this when there's such a nice place down the street like the Golden Spur. Signore, uh, vuole saper perché no andante al altro salon? Ah, altro quattro posto non c'è un tiziano. He says the other place doesn't have a titian. Oh. Well, thanks, a titian. Uh, che cosa? 
by a, a Tiziano. <laughs> che cos'è Tiziano? <laughs> oh, mamma mia. Tu non facci un Tiziano. Da me, il pioggi di oro. Ah. El rado, magnifico lavoro di arte in tutto il mondo. That's a Titian. He says it's a rare work of art. Ah, sicuro. But if this is a real work of art, it's worth an awful lot of money. What am I telling you for? Well, maybe it's because you're turning honest. Yeah, but I can't make any money that way. Uh, there's some funny things happening out there on the porch. Yeah, the, n n never mind the porch. Is he, is he sure? Ah, uh, senor. Uh, sei sicuro? <laughs> Ma sicuro, signorina. Credo che io, io, Ernesto Giuseppe Antonio Matanucci Matanelli Sargino, non sacci un tiziano. He's sure. We did it! <laughs> hey, Joe! Ha! We're rich! <laughs> <laughs> About the porch. Thank you. Um, how, 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 how much is it worth, huh? Quando costa? Ooh! Ooh! <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, that's the green leaf. <laughs> <laughs> I gave them away. That's what I mean. I threw it away. Oh, somebody hit me with hey. a stick. Hey, Jamie. Jamie, come here. Come here. Come here. Uh, what about the porch? Never mind the porch. Take a look at that picture and get some culture in you, boy. Is the, the naked lady famous? <laughs> Have some respect, Jamie. Not only is she famous, she's a piece of art. Guardi la faccia, che bello, eh? La faccia, le mani, e le linee, tutte. What's he saying? It don't make no difference. You just pay attention. Ah, salute, Tiziano. Salute, da me. Mr. Cartwright, you've got four minutes to sell your property. If I'm not mistaken, that's the Titian that was stolen on its way to the San Francisco Art Museum. Well, I'm sorry, Mr. Cartwright, but if this here is stolen property, I'll have to take care of it. Two minutes. I just have to express my regrets to Miss Frost. Fellas? Fellas. Not now, Ellen Sue. Not listen, now. Listen, listen. We want to buy the show. Sold. Table. We're opening a restaurant. Yeah, veal parmesan and chicken cacciatore and ravioli. Never mind the menu. We're offering $200. He meant $25. Sold. Give her the deed. Oh, yeah. There we go. You still had 45 seconds left. <laughs> Told you we wouldn't let you down. Didn't take long to get the whole story. This here painting was hijacked on its way to the San Francisco Art Museum. Been missing near 10 years now. I still can't believe it's worth all that money. One doesn't think of art in terms of money, Mrs. Lucas. Oh, goodbye, fat lady. Oh. Take a good look, Jamie. You may never get a chance to see another great work of art like that. C could you tell me something, Haas? Well, I ain't no expert, but I can try. What? Well, I was just wondering, um, why is it that I couldn't look at the naked lady when she was just a naked lady, and now all of a sudden I can because she's a great work of art? Well, that's, that's simple, Jamie, because you see, it's with a. Hey, Joe, explain that to him, will you? Uh, oh, well, it's uh, it's simple. When, when you put uh, something on on uh, on a kid, uh, you, you're, you're his father. Why don't you tell him? Well, uh, hey, Jamie, it's uh, Frenchy. Dio, Dio. I trust these are deluxe accommodations. Well, if you're looking for something fancy, you better try Knob Hill. Otherwise, it's going to cost you 15 cents. That is, if you got the change. Uh, 
chap. I, I find myself in the rather unusual position. Oh, that goes on every night. They don't enjoy it, Lester. Kill each other. Hey! Come on, come on, come, come on. on. Will you break? Come on now. Jesus, oh, Kettle Lesser. Oh, gentlemen, Jesus, gentlemen, violence, violence is no way to it. settle anything. I just rolled over my sleep and he got touchy, that's all. Yes, well, sure. there's no cause for any further worry. You, sir, why did you sleep in the bunk and you here? And I shall sleep in the middle. Now, shall we get a good night's rest? And thank you, my good man, for settling everything. Hey, you owe me 15 cents for the night. Oh, in the confusion, you must have forgotten I paid you. You paid me? I don't recall. Yeah. My dime and my nickel. That's your dime and your nickel. All right. All right, now, y'all keep it down in here. And don't you try anything either. Your distrust of your fellow man will lead you to great unhappiness. Um, may I borrow this newspaper? I found that reading helps me doze off. Uh, it's not mine. It's here when I got here. Thank you, sir. You just be careful. Hey, mister. Hey, mister, you are an artist. I mean, the way you conned that clerk out of 15 cents, I thought he was going to hand you change. <laughs> Poor soul had merely forgotten that I'd paid him. Oh, come on. Look, you don't have to kid me. I'm in the same line of work, only I'm, I'm not that good. Hey, the name's Jordan, Gil Jordan. How do you do? Mine's Bradley Meredith. Hey, how come you're stuck in a rat hole like this? I have to say it's merely a way stop on the road to better things. Oh, it's becoming a frightful nuisance. But one must get used to it. Is that your twin brother? No, 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 no relation at all. Must be a very rich man. Says he's the largest rancher in the state. Oh, uh, let's see. A millionaire once or twice over. I had the pleasure of meeting Mr. Cartwright. And thanks to our inordinate resemblance, we, uh, he almost became a most generous benefactor. <laughs> Unfortunately, my accomplices were both stupid and greedy. You should have had me along. One can't look back to yesterday. However, Mr. Cartwright's sabbatical might provide an excellent opportunity for another visit. Necessary financing. He's got the money in his back pocket. I almost had it, but there's no chance now. My friend, one lives by one's wits, not by chance. <coughs> now I warn the both of you. No, 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 no need to become alarmed. Your snoring is keeping us from getting any sleep. Oh. It's uh, lying on your back that does it. If you would just turn over on your side. Right. You remember what Hopsing say. No eat too much of that fancy food. Now be careful. What you forget? I didn't forget a thing, Hopsing. Nothing. You know, the way he acts, you'd think that whole celebration was just for him. 
Uh, I wish it were. Oh, Paul. It's a great honor. Oh, I know it is. You said a... Well, a man should know what he's accomplished in life without somebody having to give a speech and present a scroll to him. I got everything, Hopsing. Shirts, underwear, handkerchiefs. Where is soap? Soap? Uh, Hopsing, who cares about soap? We're staying at the nicest hotel in Carson City. If he wants soap, he asks for soap. Jamie not ask for soap in Pantalosa. Jamie not ask for soap in Carson City. You wait. And then we do ourselves a favor and sneak out of here before Hopsing gets back, or we'll never make it to Carson not City. Not unless you want to do the cooking when you get back. Hopsing, hurry up with the soap, please. You wash every day behind, behind the ear. Uh, yeah, right. You know where to find us if you need us, Hopsing, right? Don't worry. Hopsing in charge of Ponderosa. Nothing go wrong. All right, let's go, everybody. Come on. Bye, Hopsing. Well, I knew Mr. Cartwright would be punctual. We won't have to rush any preparations now. He's a dead ringer for you. Yes, isn't he? Because he looks a bit older. Ranching's a very hard life. My boy, I have a feeling this will be much easier and much more profitable than my first visit. Come on. Yes, splendid, splendid. Hey, do you think it's safe in here? Of course. We won't be disturbed here. There. Where'd you get those? I acquired these on my last visit to the Ponderosa. Fortunately, the San Francisco pawnbroker hadn't disposed of them. Very good. Now, yes, let's get this coat now. Sure hope it fits. You break into a store at night, there are no alterations. Oh, perfect. Perfect. Absolutely perfect. My dear chap, you look very distinguished. Uh, no, not the pants, nay, no. Um, not for someone of your youth. Um, I would use them in more tragic moments, um, by tapping the palm of your hand. Oh, like this? A, a bit more slowly, as if in deep thought. <laughs> Splendid. <laughs> you're, you're the most intelligent pupil I've ever had. All right, now we have the tools of your trade, Doctor. Let's run over your professional background. All right, I'm Dr. Gilbert Jordan, graduate. Uh, isn't there some other way of doing this? My friend, there's no need to be nervous. We will work with the full blessings of the law. Hey, I, I don't trust those blessings. Trust them? Have I been wrong yet? system which could cause coagulation in the capillaries. Oh. Where's Horse and Joe? Mr. Cartwright told him to stay in Carson City. He didn't want to spoil the celebration. At a time like this? Roy, I'm in the hands of a brilliant young doctor. Thank heavens he was in Carson City when I, when I was stricken. Well, it seems to me that if he's any kind of a doctor at all, he'd have you in bed, not sitting in a rig like this. Mr. Cartwright insisted on stopping to see you. Roy, I must make certain that my affairs are in order. Would you be, would you be good enough to, to get my lawyer out to the Ponderosa as quickly as possible? Now, what do you want with a lawyer? Are you going to be all right? Of course, my dear friend. But we mustn't take anything for granted. I'll have George Osgood out to the Ponderosa, even if I have to pull him out of bed. Now get him out to the ranch. Eat hop soup. You feel better. I warn you. 
You get belly ache, you eat wrong kind of food. I've seen, I've seen. Come here. I only wish it were Mr. Cartwright's stomach, but it's much more serious than that. Now, he must have absolute quiet if there's to be any chance of recovery. I'm safe, you know, make no sound. Is he going to be underfoot all the time, is he? No, Pop Singh is invaluable. Very trusting. I found out that last time I was here. Well, if you think that's smart, you're going to smell up the whole room. Well, you can always open up the windows, get some fresh air. I need some relaxation. This dying is so strenuous. Yes? Sure, coffee. Relax, relax. J just one moment. Uh, don't be too sure now. The doctor's eminence is based on his ability to be vague. Stethoscope, stethoscope. Sheriff, Mr. Cartwright asked only to see his lawyer. Now, too many visitors would not be wise at a time like this. Now, Josh Martin is not a visitor. He's Ben's own doctor, and I thought he ought to have a look. I don't understand it. He was in my office only a week ago, and he couldn't have been in better shape. Doctor, I assure you, I'm completely qualified. I'm a graduate of the Columbia Medical Young School. Young man, I don't care where you were graduated from. I was Ben's doctor before you were born. Doctor, Mr. Cartwright is my patient. You're being highly unethical. <laughs> it's perfectly all right. I'm, I'm warning you, doctor. His condition is very, very precarious. There's almost no pulse. His fever is dangerously high. Uh. His breathing, I've never heard anything like it. Get a nurse over here immediately. I don't need some old crone hovering over me. And you don't have to whisper. I am not afraid. Roy, didn't you bring my lawyer? George Osgood is right here, Ben. Uh, uh, dear George, I feel... Much safer with my legal right arm. Oh, it's a shame the illness had to spoil your celebration, Ben. Oh, it doesn't matter. What matters is the people of this great state who so <laughs> honored me. I want to repay them. We've been more than generous in your will. Oh, not nearly enough. I want the people of Virginia City to have schools equal to any in the country. I want the fire department to have the finest equipment. I want hospitals. I, I want to make these bequests before it's too late, George, so I can see the beginnings. Then you're a rich man, but... You don't have that kind of ready cash. You'd have to sell off a... Oh, possessions are mere transitory things. What does it matter if I sell off all my cattle, my horses, my land? Roy, you'll help them find buyers before it's too late. Then I'll have every qualified buyer in town out here tomorrow morning with cash in his pockets. Bless you, Roy. Gentlemen, please, please. C come along, come along. You're, you're taxing the patient's strength. Please. <laughs> Was I convincing? Did you feel that last extremity? <laughs> <laughs> you scared the daylights out of me. When that doctor started to take your pulse, I thought I was going to run out of here. <laughs> oh, simple trick. I learned it during the war. Tunica, here, help me take it off. Uh, ah, the army doesn't want any recruits without a pulse. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and the, uh, this hot iron was, uh, you set that down, would you? <laughs> <laughs> 
little uncomfortable, but it was excellent for the fever. And I must say, I just felt terrible for that poor old doctor. My breathing must have sounded horrible through the stethoscope. <laughs> little sandpaper does the trick. <laughs> Bradley, I've never met anyone like you. You're incredible. Uh, well, just uh, careful planning. I knew the sheriff would, uh, would check, you know, in his deep concern. <laughs> and the cart rides will be back for another three days. We can sell off practically everything. You will stay exactly 24 hours. And then you will announce to the world that I've passed on to the great rancher in the sky. But I shall create a precedent. I will take it with me. I... I... I, I think it's perfect. Oh, I think it's a bit too perfect. This is the signature of a hale and hearty Ben Cartwright. I think I know the price of everything. Cattle, land, horses, even hop singers' wages. I've got most of it right here. Excellent. Wouldn't want to think we were being swindled. <laughs> what about that? I think that's perfect. <laughs> Bradley, is there something you can't do, is there? Uh, if it's dishonest, no. Yes? Uh, just a minute, please. Did you tell the sheriff I'd be down just as soon as I could muster my strength? I gave orders. And I told him exactly that. Down, down. All right, all right. Yes? Oh, oh Dr. Martin. How is he? Well, the slender thread is holding. Dr. Jordan, you've been absolutely selfless, but you cannot go without sleep 24 hours a day. I brought my nurse. I don't need any ancient crone hovering over me. My uh, regular nurse, Miss Prendergast, is visiting her family, but Ellen has been very helpful in several cases. Ben, you remember Ellen? Lucy Clark's granddaughter. Little Ellen. Come over here, my dear. Oh, my, my, my. You've matured beautifully, Ellen. Why, Mr. Cartwright, you saw me only last week. Ah, uh, 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 this, this illness, this, my, my head. Oh, poor dear Mr. Cartwright. Uh, Lovely, lovely, cool fingers, my dear. Ben, I'm glad you decided to listen to reason. I was sure he would. Uh, Dr. Martin, uh, I think he's a little better today. I'll keep you informed if he takes any turn for the worse while. I'll do that, Doctor. I'll let you know, all right? Yeah. My dear, I feel my strength waning. Uh, perhaps an alcohol rub. Oh, I'm very good at that. Oh. Uh, Mrs. Cartwright, I'm afraid we'll have to postpone the alcohol rub. There are businessmen waiting downstairs to see you. Yes, yeah, of course. You never look better, Ben. In the pink. Doctor. Doctor? Yes. Would you please prop up these pillows so I can see my friends? Yes, there you go. Your friends are here, the father brothers, Dan and Mac, the cattle dealers. Oh, how oh, nice. And Mayor Harlow's here with Sheriff Coffee and Mr. Osgood. Now, you know that the cattle market has been very bad lately. But since it's you, Ben... Our old good friend. We're willing to pay six dollars a head for 2,000 head. Six 
dollars a head. Uh, gentlemen, gentlemen, please. You're upsetting the patient. Dan, how can you drive a hard bargain at, at a time like this? We can go eight dollars a head, even if we lose money. That's still four dollars less than the market uh, price. Yes, gentlemen, let us not argue. If they wish to take advantage of my condition, uh, if they do, Ben, it's the last time they'll pull any of their shady deals on anybody. The mayor and I'll see to that. Mac, you're not fooling anybody with that good brother, bad brother act. All right, we'll go $12 a head, but only out of the kindness of my heart. Do you have a bill of sale? Right here. Now, Ben, you know how bad the horse market is today. But I'm going to give you, just out of sentiment and, and for old time's sake, um, $40 a head for that 300 horses you got up there in the north pasture, and the same price for those you got in the corral, including the brood man. $50 a head? Oh, you didn't hear me, Ben. I, I said $40 a head. Mr. Henderson, this is no time for haggling. Something wrong? He didn't understand the price. Everything seems so far away, so distant. Did he say... Fifty dollars or sixty dollars? Well, I, 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 I didn't say either. Mr. Henderson, this is not an auction block. If you have any shred of human decency. You're right, I said fifty dollars a head would be fine. Ben, if this deal includes the mineral rights, I'd advise against it. We can wait. We can. Now, there might be something on that land, there might not be. Look, after all, I'm the one taking the chances. All right, I'll give you $20 an acre, and you can take it or leave it. Uh, uh, Gentlemen, please, please. Mr. Cartwright can't take much more. Uh, you shall have your pound of flesh. Give me the bill of sale, I'll sign it. I don't want any bill of sale. I want it entered on the deed. With mineral rights. But the deed's still at the county recorder's office. All right, you let me know when you get it. Oh, Ma. George, hey, George, I'm sure we'll be able to get it for you. Ben, the county recorder's office is closed. Hmm? Yes, they made it a legal holiday honoring you. Mm -hmm. We'll just have to wait until Monday. Uh, Mr. Cartwright, don't you remember? The county recorder's office sent you the deed back. I said that. Yes, uh, gentlemen, if, you, if you'll just give me a little time with Mr. Cartwright's help in his more lucid moments, I'm sure we can find a deed. We'll have it for you by tomorrow morning. Oh, uh, will he last until morning? Well, I think I can pull him through. Good. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you very much. You've been invaluable. Thank you. Good afternoon. Hopset. Would you mind? <laughs> How do we go about getting that deed? Well, tonight I thought we might pay a little visit to the county recorder's office. I mean, a man with your talents, a small town safe shouldn't present any problem. Jordan has $49,000 in that drawer. It's ample reward for one day's work. Let's just settle for that. What's the matter, Bradley? Are you getting nervous? No, I'm not getting nervous. I'm just experiencing a new sensation, conscience. We've exploited the grief for a good man long enough. And you think we're doing the right thing, huh? Oh, absolutely. My boys will never be so callous. See how this strikes you. The horse and Joe and Carson. How can you remain in Carson City at a time like this? Suggest you get back immediately, sign Roy Coffey. I only wish you could make it stronger. Well, if I'd have wrote down here what I was thinking, this paper would be burning up right now. I'll drop it off the telegraph. Thank you. If I forget anything, Jamie can bring it later. Don't you think you have to tell Pa about what you're doing? I don't want to bother with it now. That's the way he's feeling. You can explain it to him when you accept it. Explain what? Oh. Paul, how's your stomach? Better? Boy, I, I don't know what putting the food in the governor's banquet last night it feels like. But I'm glad. Didn't bother me none. <laughs> Nothing bothers you. There you go. 
Well, we didn't want to bother you with this, but I guess you better take a look at it. It's a telegram we got from Roy Coffey. Suggests you get back immediately. Oh, well, that's all about. Why would he send it to you, not to me? He probably figures you're tied up with the festivities. Austin and I will go back to the ranch. We'll check it out. If it's really serious, we'll yeah. send you wire at the barbecue. Oh, no, I'm not going to be able to make it to the barbecue. The mere mention of the word sets my stomach to churning. Paul, they're all going to be expecting you. You're the guest of honor. I know, I know. You boys will just have to do the honors for me and make apologies. Jamie, you and I are right back to the Ponderosa. That is, if you, if you don't mind leaving the festivities. No, no, I don't mind. insist on this caper, I reserve the right to choose my partner for the next engagement. Oh, yeah, well, after this, you can do anything you want. Quietly. Is something wrong, doctor? No, 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 I'm, uh, I'm just going into town for some additional medication. Oh, Mr. Cartwright hasn't had a relapse. Oh, no, no, I'm happy to report that he's having his first comfortable night. But he must not be disturbed. Oh. Rest is the absolute key. I will make a sound. I knew I could count on you. Doctor, can I tell you something? I wasn't sure I wanted to become a nurse, but working with you, I realize what a noble profession it is. I'm going to make it my life's work. Helen. Helen, you're much too pretty to waste your life in a drab uniform. When I'm being so honored, it seems rather indecent. The legal holiday is honoring Ben Cartwright, not you. Yes. Well, what's that? Flypaper. You call yourself a professional? I'll need a small rock. down and ask Roy Coffey to come out to the Ponderosa. And get those pills from Dr. Martin, huh? Right away, Pa. Yeah, yeah.
right. What are you doing outside dressed? Oh, I'm usually dressed when I'm outside. Oh. Oh, now, you see what happens? How could you dare leave your bed for one moment? Wait, 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 wait a minute. What, what are you doing here? Oh, poor Mr. Cartwright. But you'll remember just as soon as the fever goes. Fever? Wait a minute. It's just a stomach now, ache. Please, Mr. Cartwright, if anything happens, I'll hold myself responsible. I'm not sick. Please, Mr. Cartwright, don't argue. It's only a miracle that you're still here. Now, you do want to get better, don't you? So you can see all the wonderful things you're doing for Virginia City? The wonderful things I'm doing? Oh, getting all that money for a schoolhouse, fire equipment, and a brand new hospital. Oh, you must be very proud. Well, well, proud isn't the word. You put this nightshirt on and climb right back into bed. Or do you want me to do it for you? Oh, no, no, I, 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 I can do it. I'll be back in two minutes just to make sure. Jesus. Meredith? Now, oh, that's better. That's my good patient. Uh, Ellen, Ellen, um, I, I know this illness has, has made me a bit vague, but does Dr. Martin think it's serious? Oh, yes, and so does Dr. Jordan. Dr. Jordan? You were very lucky he was in Carson City. If he hadn't brought you back last night, there's no telling what might have happened. That's a remarkable achievement. Well, I'm glad you appreciate him. Now, remember, I'll be in my room right across the hall. I don't want to see anyone wandering around again. Me, Ben Cartwright. Open up, Mr. Cartwright. How sick that I'm allowed to talk to you? You very sick man. You not to be bothered. Hopsing, open this door. Mr. Cartwright, please no die. You go back to bed. Go back to bed.
Mr. Cartwright, I don't know what I'm going to do with you. Suppose I were to tell you there are two Ben Cartwrights. Of course. And maybe three or four, but tomorrow when you feel better, they'll all go away. And you try to get some rest. For your own sake. Yeah. here a while ago, that Meredith fella, he's back. He's back up. <laughs> Mr. Cartwright, you're just throwing your life away. What happened? You have no idea what you're doing to me, wandering around every which way. I'm sorry to have upset you, my dear. Well, if you do it again, I'll just have to tell Dr. Jordan. Oh, no. No, don't. Don't do that. Oh. Now, a good night kiss, and I shall sleep like a bed. That's more like my Ben Cartwright. Thank you, my dear. Exactly what Mr. Cartwright say. He forget all about Dr. Jordan. Good. Oh, uh, one more thing. Don't say a word until Sheriff Coffee gets here. Hop say no say nothing. He used to it.
Welcome back, Mr. Meredith. Ellen. Ellen? Oh, how could you dare come here after what you've done? Ellen, I had to say goodbye before I give myself up. Well, you might have saved yourself the trouble. Ellen, you don't understand I'm innocent. I was fooled by Meredith like everyone else. He's clever. And what about all that money you took? Ellen, I don't know anything about the money. When Mr. Cartwright arrived, I just panicked and ran. I saw my whole medical career finished. Ellen. Ellen, it doesn't matter what happens to me, but I could have done so much to ease the suffering of other people. Well, you can explain all this to the sheriff and Mr. Cartwright. No, 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 no. It's too late. I'll be tarred by the same brush as Meredith. If I had lost my head, I... I would have been on my way to California. A few months of research and I would have found what I have been searching for for years. What? The cure for yellow fever. Well, the world mustn't suffer for this one mistake. I hated to ask you to come into town. We've been questioning your friend Meredith all morning long and just getting nowhere. My friend Meredith? <laughs> well, what do you think I can do? Well, maybe you could get him to listen to reason. Coughlin, bring in the prisoner. Still no place of Jordan? None. And no trace of the $49,000 either. You have just got to make this man talk. I'd be delighted to talk, Mr. Cartwright. I just don't have the answers the sheriff wants. Now, would you please take these handcuffs off? They're not only restricting, they're humiliating. You are keeping them on. Not just for safety, but just so as I can tell you two apart. All right, tell me. Where is Jordan hiding out? I don't know. He neglected to leave his forwarding address, as I told you. Saved him the trouble of splitting the money. Meredith, I got a record on you that is so long it won't even fit into that desk drawer. Mr. Cartwright, would you please tell this strong arm of the law that I would be delighted to help him find Mr. Jordan. I don't like being swindled any more than any honest man does. Roy, I... Uh... I believe he's telling the truth. I think it must be very difficult for a man like Meredith to uh, admit to the fact that he has been taken. I'm not buying it, Ben. Meredith, do you have any idea of the damage that you've done here? The Fowler brothers and Walt Henderson are screaming for the return of their $49,000, or they want my scalp. Oh, and they're such decent men. And the young Clark girl is leaving Virginia City for good. That's right. Doc Martin was just here and gave me the news. Ellen is so ashamed of what happened that she just can't face anybody. So they're leaving town for good. How very strange. Coughlin, take him away. Oh, wait, wait a minute, Sheriff. Wait a minute. Uh, may, I, may I sit down? Excuse me. I think I might be able to help you after all. I kind of thought he'd come back to him. No, 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 Sheriff, no. It's something that I finally figured out. Well, let's have it. Where's Jordan? I shall be very happy to lead you to him, on one condition, that I am allowed to go with you. I'm making no deals, not with you. Mr. Cartwright, the Sheriff is being most impractical. I'm offering $49,000 for the satisfaction of seeing a dishonest man Get his just desserts. Roy, take the chance. Ben, how in the world did you ever let him talk you into a thing like this? I'm not going to be embarrassed by asking a sweet old lady like Mrs. Clark a lot of fool questions. I think you'd be rather surprised at sweet old Mrs. Clark. Ben, you can make a fool of yourself if you want to, but I'm taking this man into town. That 
will be all, Doctor. You're making a terrible mistake. He's a fine man. He's a fine man, all right. He's wanted in six states. I gotta hand it to you, Meredith. Where'd he go? No. Who let him get away? He'll be back someday. I'm afraid. ống khói ở phía trên à, mọi người hãy uh, cùng xem mình hướng dẫn tô màu ngôi nhà này nhé Mình sẽ tô ngôi nhà này màu cam còn mài ngòi đỏ Và những ô cửa sổ thì mình sẽ tô màu xanh lá cây À, mình sẽ tô cửa chính màu xanh nước biển
và hai tầng trên màu xanh nước biển cửa sổ cửa ra bằng màu xanh lá cây mình đã tô xong ngôi nhà ừ. mọi người đừng quên ấn like subscribe kênh để ủng hộ mình nhé xin chào